Hello everyone. We hope this finds you well, in good spirit, and having a good day. I'd like to bring to your attention an article by Hannah Michaels clarifying the differences between the prophet Elijah, who will be coming in the final days today, and Elias and Elisha. There's a lot of confusion and misrepresentation in almost every Bible on the planet except for the King of Kings Bible. And this article will help clarify that. It is in reference to an article by Joseph Farah. Joseph Farah on the coming of Elijah. It seems Elijah will have a pivotal role in the coming of the Messiah, specifically in reminding a future generation of the importance of the Law of Moses, wrote Joseph Farah in his article, The Mystery of Elijah and His Return on WorldNet Daily. What is Elijah going to do before Jesus returns? Farah asks. Paraphrasing scripture, his answer is that Elijah will remind his generation about the Law of Moses, returning the hearts of the children to their fathers and vice versa. However, that's a watered-down version because scripture said to not only remember the law, but to return to it. Malachi chapter 4 verse 4 Remember ye, and return to the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Elijah's generation is warned to return to the law of Moses and God's statutes and judgments. All of these can be found in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, given to Moses by God. Pharaoh questioned, why would we need to return to the law if the church teaches that the laws of Moses is dead? He questioned, why would God bring it back again? His suggestion is, quote, just as the Pharisees of Jesus' day perverted scripture by adding to the law, is it possible that today's church has twisted scripture by subtracting from it and rendering irrelevant the commandments of God that define sin. His suggestion is correct, but partially. Let's look at what Jesus said about the churches. Matthew 6, 5 And when thou pray, thou shalt not be as hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the churches and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward, Parentheses. They wanted to be seen, and they have been seen, so they already have the reward they wanted, and therefore God will not answer them. Matthew 6.6 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to your father in private, and your father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly by answering you. Jesus indicates that God is not found in the churches, but is found within. He knew churches were corrupt and led, and still lead people away from God by adding to and subtracting from the law. But it wasn't just the churches, it was the government, and still is. The Pharisees were politicians, and what do politicians do? They add and subtract man-made legislation in direct defiance to the law of God. We are looking at church and state, which will both be judged guilty. Enoch 58.1 The Holy Book of Enoch read from the King of Kings Bible. Enoch 58.1 Prince Michael, the archangel, condemned and then decreed that the judgment shall fall on church and state. Cross-references Daniel 10.21 and Daniel 20 verse 5 Ezekiel 13.1-9 Matthew 23 Revelation 17.14 Revelation 19.2 and Surah 3.64 Cross-reference Daniel 10.21 But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of the truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things, except Michael your prince. Cross-reference Enoch 67, Revelation 5.3, 5.5 and 5.9 and Revelation 12.7 Enoch chapter 67 verse 1 cross-reference after this he angel Michael 
cross-reference Daniel 10.21, gave me the signs of all secret things in the book of my great-grandfather Enoch, and in the three parables which had been given to him by God, inserting them for me, Noah, among the words of the book and the parables, cross-reference Enoch 38.1, 2, chapter 68.42, cross-reference Revelation 5.3, and no man in heaven, nor earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Revelation 5.5 5 cross-reference. And of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the source of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. Cross-reference Revelation 5.9. And they sung a new song, cross-reference Isaiah 42.10, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God, by thy blood out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation. Cross-reference Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon Lucifer, and the dragon fought and his angels. Enoch 58.1 Prince Michael the archangel condemned and then decreed the judgment shall fall on church and state. Cross-reference Ezekiel 13.1-9 And the word of the I Am came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophecy, and say unto them that prophecy out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the I Am. Thus saith the Lord, I am, woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit, and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. They have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle of the day of the I am. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The I am saith, and the I am hath not sent them and they have made others to hope that their words should be confirmed. Have ye not seen a vision, and have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, The I am saith it, albeit I have not spoken? Therefore thus saith the Lord I am, Because ye have spoken vanity, and seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord I am. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity, and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, I am. Enoch 58.1 Cross-Reference Matthew chapter 23 Cross-reference, Revelation 17:14. These shall make war against the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Cross-reference, Surah 3, 64. Say, O people of the book, the Bible, come to common terms between us and you, that we worship none but God that we associate no partners with him, that we erect not from among ourselves lords and patrons other than God. If then they turn back, say ye, bear witness that we at least are true in faith, bowing to God's will. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2 Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commands of the I Am, your God, which I command you. Deuteronomy 12.32 What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. This is a direct, simple, and concise command. Yet, how many pieces of legislation do you live under that are in direct defiance of God's law? He created the law so that his people, 
would serve and do it, and this would ensure that no body or corporation or organization or beast system could enslave you. The church should have been a community or a nation loyal to God first. This is the first great commandment. So while our persuaded politicians go along with the opposer's evil plans to turn the world into one big Sodom and Gomorrah, where every perversion is acceptable, you might want to remember and return to the law or burn. It can't get much simpler than that. As chapter 4 of Malachi begins, Behold, the day cometh that shall burn like an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly, shall be stubble, and the day that cometh that shall burn them up, saith the I am, Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch, nothing. The prophets have always been sent to warn us, but so far we've never really heeded their call. We forgot that God carries out the sentence of the law. A little time goes by, and God's people stray and forget, until the reminder comes. Then it's hard for us to grasp because our parents and grandparents didn't burn, yet, quote, the world is bad, but will be long gone before the destruction, end quote, we tell ourselves. Back to Farah's article. He writes that Jesus tells us something about Elijah when the scribes ask, doesn't Elijah come before the Messiah? In quoting scripture, Farah tells us, Jesus said Elijah will come first to restore all things. Farah then asks us to consider that, quote, Elijah will restore all things. Well, this is scripturally true. Pharaoh seems to have fallen for a lie that the churches teach because he thinks that John the Baptist may have been Elijah. Writing in the article, quote, Lo and behold, in the Gospels, John the Baptist is directly compared by Jesus with Elijah, end quote. The scripture actually reads Elias, who was the disciple of Elijah. This is an example of how following the churches will lead one astray. Jesus verified that John was Elias slash Elisha and the one who appeared with Moses at the Transfiguration. Matthew 17, 3. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. 17, 10. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the lawyers that Elias must come first? 11. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall come first and restore all things. 12. But I say unto you, that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. 13. And the disciples understood that he spoke unto them of John the Baptist, Elias, Elisha, not Elijah. So when the churches teach you that Elijah already came, question their blindness or deceit. Elijah comes in the end times, as is recorded in Malachi. Pharaoh suggests that we pay attention to what Elijah will do on his second coming. Again, quote, he will restore all things. Then Pharaoh promotes his latest book, The Restitution of All Things, Israel, Christians, and the End of Age. But is Pharaoh another blind leader? Is it his book we need to read, or is it the Torah which contains God's law, statutes, and judgments? Let's examine Malachi 4 again. Malachi 4.2 But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Malachi 4.3 And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be as ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the I Am, Lord of hosts. If we fear God and remember to return to the law, our nation will be healed by Christ, the Son of Righteousness, and we can grow up as calves in the stall under his care and go forth to remove all wickedness from the earth. Another fallacy that the church teaches is that Jesus canceled the law of Moses, which is why Pharaoh wrote what he did about the law being dead. This teaching slash belief is contrary to what scripture actually says. Matthew 5.17 
Think not that I come to destroy the law or prophets. I am not come to destroy, but fulfill. Matthew 5.18 For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no way pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Matthew 5.19 Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Thus, any church teaching that the law was cancelled is pretty low in God's eyes. The only thing Jesus cancelled out was animal sacrifice, which he replaced with daily sacrifice of ego, the self, meaning we should control our human animal with our spirit being like he showed us. Jesus came to fulfill, fully preached in the Greek translation, the law, the one Jerusalem had forsaken, found in the Torah, and replaced it with the Talmud. He said it, Thus ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition, Talmud. By tradition he meant the Talmud, which means, quote, traditions of men. This is clarified in the Gospel of Mark when the Pharisees slash politicians and scribes slash attorneys ask about the disciples eating without washing their hands because it was the tradition of the elders to do so. Mark chapter 7 verse 5 Then the politicians and lawyers asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to, quote, the tradition of elders, Talmud, but eat bread with unwashed hands? 7.6 he answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Mark 7.7 7. How be it in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Christians today still worship God in vain, because they abide by thousands of pieces of man-made doctrine slash legislation, and have put the commandments of God far from them. For example, the American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, and other branches of the synagogue of Satan have seen to this as they bully everyone into being politically correct instead of lawfully abiding. No one heeds God's government, and he's going to annihilate their satanic one. Churches continue to get congregations to follow their politicians by conveniently misinterpreting scripture again by telling them to obey a higher power, political power. But our righteousness is not from any man-made political government which, quote, crafts legislation incessantly to feed the beast. We don't need to follow self-righteous individuals thinking they are a law unto themselves, keeping their traditions alive. Our righteousness is the law, and keeping and doing it. Deuteronomy 6.25 And it shall be our righteousness, if we observe to do all the commandments before the I am our God, as he hath commanded us. Scripture teaches us continually that we will be judged by our righteousness, for righteousness is immortal. Solomon 1.15 Thus, we'd better learn what that means. Solomon 1.15 For righteousness is immortal. King of Kings Bible, Old Testament, Book of Wisdom 1919. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life, and they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of life, immortality. Jesus used righteousness similarly to the law in Matthew 3.15 when talking to John the Baptist, Elias, before his baptism, and Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. 
the Spirit of God descended like a dove, and lighting upon him, signified that he took back his mantle from Elias slash Elisha. We learn the law by performing it and following the way of the King of Righteousness as our Master, Teacher, Example, and Redeemer. He is the Son of Righteousness, and He has a song for us to perform, sing, that includes the Song of Moses. Revelation 14.3 And they sung, as it were, a new song, cross-reference Isaiah 42.10, before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song except the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Cross-reference Isaiah 42.10 Sing unto the I Am the new song, cross-reference Revelation 14.3 and 15.3 And his praise from the end of the earth, ye that go down to the sea, and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Revelation 15.3 And they sing the song of Moses, Old Covenant, Deuteronomy 31, the Servant of God, and the Song of the Lamb, the New Covenant, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of the Holy People. Thus the new song is the Song of Moses, the Law of Moses, and the Song of the Lamb harmonized together. Now you've got to ask yourself, do I want to perform it and survive or be a fool? King of Kings Bible, Old Testament, Book of Wisdom, Chapter 18, Verse 27 A wise man will fear the Lord in everything, and the day of sinning he will be aware of his offense, but a fool will not observe time. These are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord, and these are the days of your servant Moses' righteousness being restored, and though these are the days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, still we are the voice in the desert crying, quote, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Words and Music by Robin Mark These are the days of Elijah. The article subtitle exclusive Joseph Farah explains what we don't know about the prophet's lineage, suggests that he has something to reveal, but his explanation falls short, reading more like a Wikipedia page. What does Elijah the Tishbite mean? If you do an internet search, websites will regurgitate each other with the accepted meaning or meanings, but you could be misled. The accepted meaning of Jesus of Nazareth is he was from Nazareth. He can't have been from a place that didn't exist until after his ascension, as it was built in the 4th century AD. Nazir simply means truth. Jesus was truth. As far as Elijah the Tishbite goes, the Wikipedia version explains that either that he was from a town with a similar spelling or that Tishbite means to dwell. Thus, Elijah could have been a sojourner as Farah points out. An explanation found on an internet forum suggests a deeper meaning. The author wrote, Tishbite begins with the root word and means to return. Adding a yod at the end makes it plural and becomes the word, meaning to dwell. With the preposition tav, the word becomes, he shall return to dwell. This definition makes more sense in the context. The word Elijah is a compound of the words El Yah, meaning my God is Yava. The passage reads, Elijah the Tishbite, or God is Yava, he shall return to dwell. Because he could have been a sojourner, some claim he could have been a Gentile. It is more likely that given his status as God's chosen prophet at the time, Elijah was a Levite. Levites were not given land because God said he would be their inheritance. Deuteronomy 10.9 Deuteronomy 10.9 Wherefore Levi hath no part or inheritance with his brethren. The I Am is his inheritance, according to the I Am thy God promised him. Levites dwelled in Israelite lands and were sheltered and fed by them. 
Joshua 14.4 For the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim, Israel. Therefore they gave no part unto the Levites in the land, save cities to dwell in, with their suburbs, for their cattle, and for their substance. Before returning to Samaria to warn King Ahab and Jezebel as a Levite, Elijah could have dwelled freely in Gilead, land identified with the tribe of Manasseh, Gad, and Reuben. Elijah then dwelled by the brook Cherith near Jordan, dwelled near the widow in Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon, and returned to Samaria again to challenge the 850 false prophets. His mission took him to many places, like Beersheba, Mount Horeb, Damascus, Bethel, and Jericho. Elijah literally received his inheritance when he was taken to dwell with God. 2 Kings 2.11 2 Kings 2.11 And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Remember Levi's portion of inheritance? Deuteronomy 10.9 Wherefore Levi hath no part nor inheritance with his brethren, and the I am is his inheritance according to the I am thy God promised him. Elijah was taken by an identified flying object into the sky, which they called a chariot of fire. 2 Kings 2.11 And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind unto heaven. But Elijah was prophesied to return and dwell among us, aligning more with the forum's explanation of what Tishbite means, God is Yahweh, and he shall return to dwell. In fact, Christ is also prophesied to dwell with us again. To his credit, Farah challenges readers to read scripture themselves. However, the article is meant to introduce his new book. You could choose to read it, or you could choose to read what Elijah the prophet wrote in 1986, The Way Home or Face the Fire. It's a free download. He sheds the best light on his purpose and reveals the mysteries of God and why you are here.